Happy Wednesday, everybody. We'll get started here in a few minutes. If you could just give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen and hear me, that would be awesome. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Good afternoon. We'll get started in just a couple more minutes.
All right, it's three o'clock, so we'll get started. Um, I did mute a couple people because it was a little background noise coming through. Um, we got a lot to cover today, so we'll get started right on time. We're going to look at creating um, a newsletter using Moxie. Uh, Carrie touched on that on the, um, I think it was Blue Sync last week, um, but we're going to go ahead and take a deep dive and look at how to really um, expand that newsletter into something your agents can use. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you the one I created today, um, and this is kind of what we'll be doing. I don't know if we'll get through all of it, um, but most of, um, most of this is the same thing over and over again. But this is the email that would go out. There would be a message here from the agent, and we're going to look where that's entered um, as well. I didn't put anything in at that point, um, but here is where the, um, the receiver would click to view the newsletter or the presentation. And then they would just scroll down to get it started. You notice the agent's information will be at the top and it'll be branded as they scroll through the presentation. And there's a variety of different types of content in here. And we're gonna look at how to enter each one. So we have an image, we have some text, um, we have some iframed or embedded web pages, um, all kinds of stuff here. We have a YouTube video, um, some, uh, some more graphics and images, um, but it's just a matter of getting this laid out and getting everything in place. We've even got the blue book here in the newsletter that they can flip through. Um, and then another web page, and then a contact form. Any of you that have been on some of my other calls um, for virtual open houses, we've gone through um, how to create these, these forms. And if we have time, we'll take a peek at that too. Um, but I will definitely show you how to get it in here if you have one available. So this is what we're going to um, be working on today, something that looks more or less like this. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Of course, we go to Moxie and we're going to create this in our present account. And um, I'm also at the end going to show you if you're an ASC and you want to do a regional one for your office, we're going to look at how you can share that down to your agents. Um, and you can also make it editable so that they can make any minor changes that they may want to make. Um, so we'll look at that at the end. But first, we'll go ahead and create the presentation with our Moxie Present. And since this isn't a specific um, MLS driven presentation, we're going to go ahead and create new. And from the uh, presentation types, we're going to go ahead and do non listing. I think it's best to use the um, brokerage templates because there's things in branding in place so that the agents don't have to worry about that. So I would engage the agents to use the brokerage templates. And once you select that, you can continue. And we'll go ahead and do, let's do a heart area. Whoops. So I'm going to make one for um, one of our other offices. And as a ASU you may have access to multiple offices, I'm going to go ahead and select the appropriate office for this, um, this presentation. Create. And personally for me, um, I mean, an agent may want to go ahead and keep the cover page, but I think for a newsletter, we're just used to that design layout where that's all it is, is the newsletter. So when I created mine, I just went ahead and deleted the cover page and the agent profile page because their branding will be on the top. And I just went ahead and started off with add page to create my newsletter um, as a one page presentation from scratch. So I hit create, sorry, my brain is stopping. I hit add page and I'm going to create a new page. I'm not going to add a page from the library. So we'll hit create new and we're going to build this page from scratch. We're not uploading anything at this point. So we're going to go ahead and build page. And then I went ahead and started with this. Um, it doesn't matter which one you start with because we can adjust our columns and our rows. Um, but this one just gave me a nice header and some columns to start with. So I started with this one here on the far right. So I selected that and then I just hit create. 
Now there was a lot of places I went out to get my, my different assets. And I think the easiest way to create something like this is to have everything in mind before you get started. Um, so we can kind of go through some of these tabs I have open to see what I used them for before we jump into actually building this newsletter out. So you'll notice on the one I showed you that I had some property search pages at the top that were location specific. So that's why I have this open, my property searches on CB Great Lakes. Come on, this bar is getting in my way. Go away bar. Pull this down a little bit. Um, the next one, at the very bottom, I had a large image that was a featured property. So I went ahead and found a property that I felt like I wanted to feature in that newsletter, and this was the one. This was where I got a lot of my images from. We've got some great images and resources, instrument resources. Um, thinking outside the box, social graphics don't have to be for social, just for social media. I used some social graphics for um, the newsletter. I pulled in the images and put them in the newsletter and we're gonna see how that worked. I also, since this is a big um, talking point right now, this is relevant to um, a newsletter that would be coming out right now, um, is our CV Healthy Home. So I did grab an image from there to put in the newsletter as well. Presentations, at the bottom I did have the blue book. So I've got this page open. So when I'm ready to grab that, it's here. This is that contact form that was at the bottom. So this is Jot Form and that's where I go to create my contact forms. I had a video and I got that from Coldwell Banker Real Estate YouTube channel. So I have that open. And then um, I didn't do this on the other newsletter, but I'm going to show you, um, it doesn't just have to be properties. You can bring in stuff from a blog. So if an agent has a blog and they want to put their a blog post into that newsletter, you can do that as well. So I went out to the Coldwell Banker Luxury blog so that we can embed a blog in the one that we're going to go ahead and work on this afternoon. So I kind of just thought about what I want in my newsletter and I got all those assets ready. Um, so that once I start building it, I don't have to go back and forth and think about where to go to get stuff. You can still do that, but it's nice to have it all ready for you before you start. So we're going to go back to our templates. And again, this is being recorded. I'm trying to talk slow, but I know I talk fast all the time. So um, it is being recorded. I had that nice big header image. Again, I got that from Schmidt Resources. Um, I believe I got that from the social graphics tab, um, but I've already uploaded it. So I went to social graphics. I'll go through the whole process um, just to be sure everyone's got this part down. I went to the brand graphics and my header was, um, it was actually the, this one, but we'll go ahead and switch it up and we'll use this one this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, use the We Deliver the True Value of Home. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and save image as, and I'm gonna save it to wherever I'm saving the assets for the newsletter. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my desktop. So that's how you would get the image off of um, Schmidt Resources. Again, I know some of the stuff you guys probably know, but I like to keep it simple. So then this is where my header is gonna go. And it's just an image, so I'm going to select image. Here's the one I used before, but we've got that new one now. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that from my desktop where I just saved it. And now once you add something to your library, so if you want a consistent header for all your newsletters, it's always going to be there whenever you go back to your library. So now we've uploaded this image, we can go ahead and select add. And just um, for a reminder that it is going to say that by saying, by adding this image, you are aware that you have the copyright and the use rights for this photo. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And now we have our header image for our newsletter. So um, the next thing I did I didn't want to go straight into the three columns where I had those um, property searches. I wanted to go ahead and break it up and add a little intro text here for my newsletter. So I'm going to hit the add. This is going to add a row. 
And then it's going to ask you how many columns basically you want in that row. And for that text one, I just went with one column and I said, okay. I did it as a text column. So for my header, I changed my format to, uh, I can't remember if it was large or medium, but we'll go ahead with medium so that the text is a little bigger. I made the header bold. I center aligned it. And then I don't like the dark black um, personal preference, so I changed my text color by clicking this little icon here, and I changed it to a dark gray. Okay, so now we have a header. We can hit enter and we can go ahead and change these settings now for our text paragraph. So a small text and we'll just, I'm just gonna go somewhere, where can I go? I just don't wanna have to take time typing so I'm just gonna grab some text and pop it in there. Normally you're just gonna type your text, but I'm just borrowing some text from somewhere else. Because I borrowed it from a website, it wants to clean out any formatting that was in the text. That's what this box is. Normally you're not gonna see this if you're just typing text. And there's our, there's our text box. So we have all the information we wanted for our header. Um, now, one thing I've noticed, um, and actually JD pointed it out to me today, <laughs> which was helpful, is they tend to not put a lot of spacing between their, their rows. And to um, make it look a little better and to give things room to flow, it's nice to go ahead and add some spacing. So I'm going to add a whole new row. I'm just going to do one column. Or I'm sorry, yeah, one column. Okay. And then I'm going to hit the more option. And this is just something that I fooled around with and found, but if you hit the more option right here is up, it's basically a section break or insert page break. It actually works to space that section out. So that gives me a little breathing room between my sections. And then the next thing I did if we go back, I should just go ahead and keep this up as well. You'll notice that, um, so we have our section break right here. And then above these search boxes, um, just to kind of help make it clear, because once we embed the page, there's a lot of information. I've got a whole row that just has titles for what's going to come below. So we'll go ahead and we're going to add this extra row so that we can tell the people that receive this newsletter what they're looking at when they get down here to the embedded web pages. So minimize that and add my row by hitting my little plus sign. I want the headers to match these columns, so we're going to go ahead and change this to three. So now I have a header over each one of the columns below. And I'm just adding some text. I'm going to go ahead and make it medium, bold, and again I'm going to change my color to gray. Again we're going to do a lot of these things over and over. Um, and I'm going to center that. And we'll go to our next one, bold, medium text, gray. Now oh, let's do yours. All right, and then the last one. Okay, 
So now we have the headers for all three of the property searches that we're going to go ahead and embed, embed in here. And now, the, again, these don't have to be property searches. These can be blog posts. These can be featured properties. <coughs> web page that you want to bring into your newsletter. But we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and stick with homes for sale. So I'm going to go back to that property search tab that I already have open and ready to go. And all I have to do is change the search criteria to the different city. So now I've got all my homes for sale in Hart, Michigan. All I have to do is go up here to the URL bar and copy the whole URL. And then I'm going to go back to my presentation. I'm going to select the more option right here. And what I want to do is I want to um, iframe this page is what it's called. All you have to remember is iframe and that it's the fourth icon in the top row. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to paste the URL here. And then the only other thing you really need to tell the system is um, the size. The easiest way to do your width is to do percent. We want the width of this to be 100% of the box that it's going into. So we'll, the page is now gonna be 100% of this width here. And then height, it just depends. Um, we're gonna enable the scrolling. So um, obviously they're not gonna see the whole page in that little tiny box. I usually do um, 500 or 600. Um, we'll go ahead and do 500 this time. But this time it's not percent. We wanna go ahead and add a PX after it. That's for, that stands for pixels. So then it's going to be 500 pixels high. This box will be 500 pixels high. But you'll be able to scroll to see the rest of the page. I'm gonna set the alignment to middle and I'm going to enable scroll so that way that they, they can scroll through that page. They'll even have the scroll bars if needed. And that's it. And we're gonna do this a couple more times so that you'll just get used to that. You're not gonna see anything until we save the page, which we'll do after I go ahead and add these other two. And I'll walk through both of these just because it's, it's the trickiest step in the whole thing. So we'll walk through it a couple times. So now I'm going to go to my new era search. I'm going to copy. Sorry, the, um, the zoom keeps getting in my way. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back to my presentation. I'm going to select the more option for this field. And I'm going to go pour into the globe, not to the color globe that's in bed. We want the iframe globe. I'm going to paste the URL. I'm going to tell it I want it to be 100% wide. And I want the height to be the same for all three of these boxes in the row. So I'm going to go ahead and say 500 pixels again. I'm going to put it in the middle and I'm going to enable the scroll. And OK. And then the last one is pent water. So obviously that one's got a lot more, <laughs> a lot more activity. We're gonna go ahead and copy the URL. Back to our, oh, I just closed my presentation. Darn it, everything's getting in my way. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Oops. Okay. Gotta love it when technology goes the wrong way. I'm going to edit my heart real estate newsletter. Hey, Cam. Home. Going on. It's yeah. a word so powerful it stirs the heart in all of us. You see it in a baby's smile. Hear it. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do, sorry about that. Um, I got too many boxes in my way. I'm going to go ahead and go back. 
to the previous one I made so that we don't have to start. Well, it won't take me down. Just loitering around her house. Just see if there's any cash laying around or anything. If you find some, we'll split it. But you guys, as I, as I <laughs> hear you guys people that, talking, then. I'm just muting you. So sorry if you find out you're muted, that's why. Add. I'm going to create new. I'm going to build it, <laughs> and I'm going to build it really, really fast. Um, I'm just going to use pent water for all three of those, and we'll skip the text section because I think you guys got that down. It's pretty easy. Um, if anyone has any questions about adding a, a column with text or a row with text, just let me know later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my image in, and I'm going to go to more iframe. Paste, 100%. Quick question. Is 100% and 500 pixels, is that about normal for, or is it? it, it it's going to be preference. When we look at the newsletter again, I'll show you where that affects. But yeah, I would say 100% is going to be normal because you want the content to fit the container it's in. Um, if you don't do 100%, it's, it's, you know, I would do at least, I wouldn't do less than 90 because you just, you want to make that container look full. Um, but it's, it's kind of personal preference as far as how things look when they're laid out. But so, yeah, if I did 50%, the content would only fill up this much of the, of this box. Does that make sense, Sarah? Yes, that makes sense. Sorry, I couldn't find my tab. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> it's all good. And then, it's a lot quicker if you put the same thing in all three boxes. <laughs> okay. So that's our row of, like I said, either featured properties or property um, searches, whatever you want to put in that box. And again, I am going to go ahead and add the um, homes for sale. So again, I. Um, you can do this either before or after, before I showed you um, how to change your formatting before, but now I'm doing it after. I'm making it medium, bold, gray, and centered. And I haven't found a way yet, but I would love to be able to just copy this whole box. <laughs> we can at least copy the text. Oh, no, I guess we can't. <laughs> We're almost caught up. Okay, so I'm not going to refine all this because we went through it once and you kind of get it. Um, just wanted to get us caught up. Sorry about that. Um, so again, after this section, I'm going to want a little breathing room. So I'm going to go ahead and add a row just to add that breathing room. So I've added the row and let it know it's just one row or one column. And then I'm going to go to my more and I'm going to use that section break again. For the next one, I'm going to go ahead and add the row for our video and our little advertisement about healthy homes. So I hit the plus sign. We do want two, and I'm going to go ahead and leave the image on the left and I'll put the video on the right. So we'll leave the, the video box bigger. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to add my image by clicking image. 
And this time I'm gonna grab the Healthy Home one right here that I've already uploaded. If it wasn't here, I would go upload, find it on my computer and upload it, but I've already downloaded it from Schmidt Resources and uploaded it, so we're good. Click Add. And there's our Healthy Home ad, our little video, or our little image. And now for video. So here we're gonna click video. I've already got that YouTube tab open, so I'm just gonna to go to that Real, um, Real Estate LLC YouTube, that's our Coldwell Banker channel. And I'm gonna add our hometown heroes. Again, any video on this site, you're welcome to use on the Coldwell Banker site. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use the current ad. It's down again. Um, to do that, I'm sorry, I've got my iframe brain going. I'm going to go to the share button here. And I'm just gonna click copy right here. Go back to my presentation. You see why it's nice to have all your assets open? There's a lot of back and forth going on. Um, so you don't have to take that time to search. You can just kind of go out there, grab it, and throw it in there. And so there we have that section done. Um, and it's really just a matter of continuing on with those same steps. It's either going to be text, an image, um, a web page, or um, a video. <laughs> so it's just a matter of putting in the assets that you want. Anytime you want to take a break and see what it looks like, you just want to make sure you save it first. And I haven't saved it yet, so I have to name it. And I'm going to enable page um, editing because you'll see here when we're done that we're going to be able to share this out to everyone in the office. So we enable page editing here and also in the other spot, they're going to be able to make necessary changes. Um, when you share it to them, their content will show up in the header and all, all of that, but they may want to make some changes to like the featured property or something like that. So we want to make sure that we're enabling page editing, especially if we're doing this at the ASC level. And make a say um, make it save and then I'm going to close it so that we can actually see what it's going to look like if we were to send it out at this point to do that we're just going to hit view we want to view the web version and then we just scroll we've got our header We've got my sloppy images because I did it in a real hurry, but you can see that they can scroll through here and see all of the properties. They can contact the agent, they can like it, they can do whatever they want, just like they were actually on the web page itself. They can also switch to map view if they'd rather know where the property is located. They can zoom into a certain part of the map to see if the home is where they want to be. Um, so there's a lot of functionality just right here in the page without them having to actually go out to the website. Here's our image. Our video, you'll see we have a little space here, a little cushion so that it doesn't look like everything's smushed together. And Sarah, this is where you could almost even, um, if this was an embedded web page, you see how it's kind of smushy here? If you did 90% and centered it, you would have a little more space. Um, these are different types of assets, so we can't do that. But if this was a web page um, we, and we did that smaller than 100%, that's where you would see that affected. And then, of course, this right here is 500 pixels high. Okay. Any questions so far? If you have any, just unmute yourself um, and throw them out there. Okay, for like that picture on the bottom there, is there a way to make it like line up the same size? Is that what you were talking about? The, yeah. The the video? That's it, it. And that's where it gets really, um, I played with it a lot. That's where it kind of gets kind of funky because you, you have to know the exact pixel height of the picture. And then you would have to, and this is where, especially with agents, um, they would have to know how to, embed the video because the way that we grabbed it you can't change the size of the video mm -hmm. but there is a way to center this horizontally so it doesn't look quite as bad 
Um, okay. Yeah, or you maybe put your video somewhere else so that it's not next to something. Um, that makes it doesn't it look fun. bad. I'm just curious if that was changeable. Yeah, I, I played with it this afternoon, and it's just um, unless you really, unless you want to embed the video instead of just doing it the easy way, um, you're not going to be able to get the pixels to really match up. Unless you take a lot of time. <laughs> So, but yeah, good question because I it, it bugs me too. And I kind of want it to all be perfectly squared and even, and um, but um, yeah. So the blue book we added um, uh, as well. So let's go ahead and go back to our edit. So folk. And what I did, and, and again, this a lot of this is a lot of the stylistic stuff is going to be personal preference, but just to kind of counterbalance it, what I did for my next row, first I'm going to put in my spacer. And then for my next row, I'm actually I'm going to do it two, just like this one. But instead, instead, I'm going to reverse the sizing. You see how that works? So now this is the same as this, but if I move that, it's basically the sizing of the first column that you're changing here. So now the first column is bigger and the second column is smaller. So right here, I'm going to put my, my little blue book. So to get to the blue book, I'm going to go to um, Schmidt Resources, and I actually already have the Presentations tab open. I'll click on my blue book. And again, I'm just going to, I'm going to move this way away from there so I don't close this whole thing again. I'm, going to, I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to copy the URL. Works just like a web page, even though it's a magazine. I'll go back to my presentation. I'm going to select the more option. And I'm going to go ahead and select my iframe again. I'm going to put in my URL. I'm going to make it 100% wide. This time I'm going to go 600 pixels so they can actually maybe read the magazine that it's big enough. Um, so 600 pixels high, middle, and scroll. That iframe is going to build out. And while that's building out, I'm going to go ahead and grab um, an image for here. I think on the last one, since this is um, basically a listing presentation, I went ahead and threw in the Are You on the Fence About Selling image. And here's where you can go ahead and center that vertically, or vertical or horizontal. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's centered so that it doesn't look as awkward, even though it's a different size. Now let's go ahead and save. And we close that out so that we can actually view it as if we were receiving it. Web. There we go. And for some reason, it's done that. I'm going to go ahead and send in a ticket. You guys saw me um, tell it to be horizontally centered, and it was not. So um, I think that's something they need to fix on the back end. Um, but it looks okay that way. And then we can actually, since this is what's called iframed and it's actually built into the page, somebody can go ahead and actually flip through the whole magazine right here. So, um, any questions on building out? I know we kind of flew through it, um, but we did it repeated. <laughs> we repeated the same steps a lot. So hopefully um, it seems pretty easy. You can always reach out to any, any, um, well, to me, I'm sure JD is good with this. There's a lot of us on the Moxie team that are happy to help out if you get stuck as you're doing this. 
Um, but any questions before we go on to sharing it as an agent and sharing it with your agents as an ASC? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that everything's saved. It is. Um, because we're back here on the edit page. So that means I saved it and came back. Um, now say that I'm an agent and I've got this all built out and I wanna send it out to my client base. You go ahead and hit send. The nice thing about Moxie is um, if they are synced with their Google or if they're bringing their contacts into Engage and building out um, different types of groups, those groups are going to show up here when they go to mail something. So if I were to type, I have a Lakeside Living group. If I start typing Lake or Lakeshore Living, my group comes up. So if, if an agent creates a newsletter group in Engage, they're gonna be able to just start typing newsletter and it's going to bring all of those people in to send it. I'm just gonna send it to myself because I have no idea who's in that group. I don't know how to spell my last name. There I am. So then of course you're gonna want a catchy subject. Um, I'm just gonna put heart newsletter, but um, you definitely want to give the email a subject that's going to engage the um, receiver and make them want to actually click on the link to open the newsletter. This is that section I pointed at in the beginning where I said this is where a message would go. Um, again, um, something engaging, hey, I thought you might like to know where the market's at right now and blah, 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 whatever that agent wants to, to say to his clients to get them to engage and actually click open the newsletter. Yes, that's I, probably the only difference between the Moxie newsletter and those traditional constant contact or all those other newsletters is those actually open up directly in their email, whereas here, um, this newsletter, they have to click the link, they have to engage, um, they have to do something to see the newsletter. So it's not just going to be their email in this nice newsletter. Um, they're going to get a nice email that says, hey, this is my newsletter, go ahead and open that up. The agent has an option to send a copy to themselves and then they just hit send. So pretty simple for them to share um, and to get, especially if they're controlling and, and managing their list and engage, um, they're going to be able to share out to their whole base at once. Um, as an ASC, we have the ability to go ahead and share this newsletter basically as a template to our agents. So once it's done, we can go to more, assign to agent. Oh, last time I did this, it gave me the office list. Let me see what I did wrong, sorry. I'm gonna go back here. I did do it from more before, but some reason it's acting strange. Let's see if I can do it from here now. Okay, I'm not sure why it's acting up because I did this earlier today. Let me try it with the one I created already. Hmm. So obviously you can assign, easily assign it to another agent. Um, don't know why. And earlier today that it let me assign it to the whole office. not it. All right, guys, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not sure why it's not, it's misbehaving. JD, are you on? Do you know why it would have changed in the last few hours? <laughs> Yeah, 
As an um, ASC, when you click assign to agent, you should actually have your office listed here, um, your whole office. I, when I did this earlier today, I actually had the, all the offices in Michigan because I have access to all of them. Um, and I was able to assign it to a whole office. Um, I guess I'm going to have to shoot an email out about that. If you have any trouble, go ahead and try it. You should be able to do so. Um, it might be that I've been playing in this all day and it's mad at me. Um, but if you have any trouble, um, don't hesitate to reach out. I can walk you through it. Um, and I will figure out why it's doing that. Sorry, I wanted to show you guys that part. <laughs> but what happens when you do that is it shows up in the agent account um, under, so let me go back to percent. Um, the agents would have a brokerage tab and if they click on the brokerage tab, um, they're able to bring in that presentation to their library. See if I can do it here. Um, so I'm sorry I couldn't show you that. I was kind of excited because I even had, I did it with the agents and I went to the agents to make sure that it worked and it worked great. Um, and I don't know why it's not working now. Any questions? Um, we did come in a little shorter than I thought we would. Um, so definitely time for Q&A. If you have anything you want to ask, just unmute and we can go over it. Quiet, crickets. All right, well, hopefully some of you will get in there and create them for the offices. Um, White House really lucky because <laughs> I did one for them. Um, since we do have a few minutes, I guess I can go through job forms real quick um, because I think it's really cool to have um, an actual um, contact form on the on the um, newsletter, especially if you're an agent. So this one, and this is what it looks like when you do so. Um, it's just this right here. This is a simple one I created. I don't have the correct logo. I did it in a hurry, but um, basically job forms is free. All you have to do is create an account and go to jotforms.com. Once you're there, you have so many um, forms you're allowed to build out before um, you have to pay. But if you go to create form, once you sign up for the free account, you can go ahead and use a template is the best way to go. And I usually just search contact. And this is the one I've always used in the past, um, but there's plenty of other ones out there. I'm just gonna grab this nice simple one. Your email address and everything is in the account, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but the, you do need to decide what you want to require the person to, to give you. Um, and this one starts out with name, email, and um, message as in the question that they have. So they would just, um, then if you want to add a phone number, shouldn't have done that quite so quick. There's this add form element here. They're not gonna charge you. You can add some elements without um, having to pay for your account. So I'm gonna hit the plus. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab phone because I think it would be good to have phone. It's gonna throw it at the bottom. I would rather have it up above the message, so I'm just gonna grab it and drag it. I can go ahead here and change what this says. I'm gonna leave it that way just for time's sake, but I can also add a logo. Um, so I'm gonna upload. I'm gonna go ahead and add, I'll search for a logo. And there's my logo. I can change the size if I want to, or I can just go ahead and leave it what it is and center it. And then that's it. That's, sorry. that's my form. Uh, all I have to do after that is go to publish. I'm going to embed this. 
And this time we're not going to worry about the iPhone frame, we're just going to embed it. So I just copied this, took it to my presentation. Add it. I'm going to get rid of this row. Ah, I'll leave it. I'm going to go ahead and add it right here. I'll put it in the middle. And we're going to do the more option. This time we're going to go to the embed icon. It's just to the right of the iframe op op option. And all we have to do is paste what we just copied. And then now if we save it, and view it, we have our contact us form. And again, it's not balanced. I just threw it in there so that I could show you um, it's a nice little contact form if, if anyone wants to add that as well to their presentation or to their newsletter. Um, so that's it. That's all of it. Um, again, that, that um, contact form, it's jotforms.com, J-O-T-F-O-R-M-S. And that's it. Hopefully everyone has fun making newsletters, get in and play with it. I had a blast today. Um, I've been training ASC, so I didn't get in and really play until today. And I, I had a lot of fun building it. So um, hopefully you guys will enjoy it and um, your agents will as well. Thanks everybody. I'll stay on for a few minutes if anyone has any questions. Um, other than that, have a wonderful afternoon and happy hump day. Halfway through. Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle, are you still on? Um, yeah, you can do any web page you build out, you can put in there. So it has to be a web page. You can't do the custom search in there. Um, and I, what I did for um, to add color between the rows is I actually created a long skinny picture <laughs> and I was playing with doing that in between. Um, so or I think you may be able to I didn't fill I didn't try filling the box. But um, you could try that as well. Um, let's see. So let's see if we go in here. You can change the font color. It doesn't look like you can change the background color. You would probably have to add an image to do that, but you can definitely do that because I did it earlier. I just didn't like the image I used, so I didn't bother. And yes, they are recording this, absolutely. Um, so other than that, everyone have a great afternoon. Hopefully, I'll reach out to Michelle. I don't know if she stayed on. Um, all right. Bye, everybody.